In this video, we are going to look at HTML to get you started with web development. We'll also go through some of the most commonly used HTML elements and then we'll try and come up with our own web page. In the next video, we'll be covering the CSS part of it. That will be much more interesting because we'll be covering things like animation using the animation and transition properties. We'll then build out the CSS part of this web page while also making it responsive to fit any device with the use of media queries. I can just show you how that's done. We'll also be building out the dark mode and the light mode in the CSS video. It's CSS only without using any JavaScript. If you want to know how this is done, be sure to stick around. Hi, my name is Charles. If you are new here, welcome. Be sure to click on that subscribe button and click on the notification button not to miss on my upcoming videos. Timestamps to this video will be included in the description box below. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the tools that I'll be using. The first thing that I'll be using is the Google Chrome. So you can go and download the Google Chrome. Then I'll show you how to download the text editor we'll be using. I'll be using VS Code. So you can go ahead and download this text editor. It's, it's really good. It's one of the best, if not the best. So to get started, let's just create a new folder. Let's name it Code. Now to create a HTML file, a couple of ways that you can go around it. Uh, the first way is uh, opening git bash, the terminal, you can open cmd or powershell, but I like using uh, git bash because it's like a Linux terminal running on Windows. And then you can create file by the command touch index.html and you can see it has created an index uh, file and you can see the type is a chrome html document this html uh, extension tells the computer that these are html document just like we have docs and xls for for excel it can be either HTML or you can write HTM. HTM is still the same thing. So that's one way. But then if, if you don't have git bash, you can open up CMD. Uh, just search for CMD. And you can do the same thing. Or click on the Windows key R and type in PowerShell. And the PowerShell window will open. You can do that. But if you want to use Git, uh, the Git terminal, you can go ahead and search for Git, then Git, and then click on the download button here for Windows. If you are using a Mac, the Mac button will come here. Yeah. And when you install, just follow the, the prompts and git bash will uh, be installed. So, the second thing is opening up your Visual Studio Code. Or it's opened up in another window. Let me just grab it. So, you go to File, then Open Folder. Then you go to your desktop where you save the file. Click on code, then select folder. And you can see the index.html file has come. Then when you click on it, it's cre it creates a tab. And if you want to create another file, just click on this and just write index maybe two dot html and it will create another file 
if you want to create another folder you just click on this new folder icon and then you type in maybe folder one or something and that will create a new folder if you want to maybe move this from the code folder into the folder one you just click like that then drag then move and you need to move that file into the folder one then to delete just right click click on delete move to psycho bin yes yeah now the first thing that you're going to learn is the structure of uh, our html document so i'm using this extension called emmet where it helps me to create a boilerplate for for html let me just show you how to to include that extension oh actually it's already included in the vs code but if you don't have it if you're using another editor like atom or brackets just click on the extension maybe search for the extension uh or emmet it's called emmet like that and maybe install it but if you're using vs code it's already pre-installed for you so to create a boilerplate you just press the exclamation mark and then tab or enter and then it will create this boilerplate for you now for any html document there is this first line which is a doc type which is called actually the html declaration the doc type html now there's there have been many versions of html and this doc type tells the browser that you're using the latest one which is html5 and for any html element we, we have an opening tag and a closing tag like for the one for html the opening tag this one and the closing tag the opening tag doesn't have a forward slash but the closing tag has a forward slash that's the main difference but for the doc type it doesn't have it's a self-closing uh, element we also have the head the head and the body just like we have the head the body and maybe the footer in word document it's the same with html documents so the head mostly contains metadata metadata which is mostly data about the document so we have this uh, character encoding which are using utf8 then we have the meta viewport for making us uh, your page fit in any device and then you have this title okay, you can see the title lets document maybe you can just save this and run it in your browser so to run it you can either open the folder then open uh, your document and you can see here the title it's document just as we, we've seen in in our html yeah we have the document title the main takeaway here is when you're creating a html document you must start with the doc type then the html uh, element and the lang Okay, it's called an attribute which is always included in the uh, opening tag of the html element so the lang here specifies that you're using the english language then you have the head and then the body the body is where all your content comes in for example let's just create a head one and let's say hello world i've already shown you one of it opening the this document the second way is using this go live server which is the live server it's an ex it's a good extension let me just show you uh, you can google here live server this extension it's really nice it tracks your html document and whenever you change anything and save it automatically reloads your web page so to open the extension 
you can either right click on your HTML document then click on open with live server that's one way or you can go here at the bottom right corner and click on the go live tab and it will open your your document in the in the browser and you can see the hello world so anything inside your body is what is rendered inside the web page so anything outside is just metadata also for the heading we have a couple of headings these are h1 we have h2 uh, maybe you can just go and copy this then you have h3 if you're using a to just type h3 then press on enter or tab then paste so we have up to h6 you can save you can, you can check your browser and you can see the h1 is the that's the largest font and then the h6 has the smallest font and what i can advise you is that for the h1 use it for like the main heading of a web page so mostly most of the web pages only have a one h1 because of what you call seo and uh, for SEO and web crawler so that you can know how your, your page is structured the next thing uh, we look at is uh, comments let's say you want to just display this h1 and all these other ones you don't want them to be displayed what you just do can can select them then click on control forward slash and that will comment it and you can see the, the 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 syntax for commenting it's a, a less than sign exclamation mark then two dashes and then on the other side it's two dashes and a greater than sign and when you save that only the h1 will appear on the screen as you can see the next thing we'll be looking at is paragraphs so for a paragraph you use a p tag or a p element rather and just do maybe a lorem 50 press tab well if you if you are using the emmet extension just type in lorem and love and then 50 and then tab and then it will come up with this dummy text for you then save and you can see that we've created a paragraph if you would like multiple paragraphs maybe you can just copy this as you can see now we have two paragraphs let's say you want to write a pre-formatted text maybe like a poem where you don't want like this to extend to the end of the page what you do is you use the pre tag and then maybe when you do i am going home today then tomorrow will be my birthday then when you save you can see this text doesn't like extend after after the i am i am going home let me sell the word home anyway after the i am going home today it doesn't extend but if you were to use a p tag on the same text let's say p just copy this You can see that it's formatted onto one line so if you, if you want like to write a poem or, some, or something use the pre but if it's paragraph use the p tag 
so the next thing we'll be looking at is the div tag I mean the div element so you just type in div then tab and then you can put any elements inside this this is usually useful when you are dividing your page and you are using uh, CSS to style it but you'll see oh it's handy when you come to CSS so you can just put another p tag in there and maybe lore put your something I mean, then tab then save you can see it just divides you can't see the p tag on on your browser but let me just show you how you can see it in the browser and just do you right click just right click on your page and then the just right click on your page and then the dev tools will open or you can click on these three dots and click on more tools developer tools and this page this part of your browser will open which is the developer tools then go to the elements tab now when you see when I hover on the h1 it shows on my page but the, the but the commented code doesn't show you can see the p tag p tag the preformatted tag I mean preformatted elements the p tag then the div and then you can see the uh, the paragraph is, is inside the div element let me just comment all this out for for you to reference the next thing we'll be looking at is the HR and BR elements let's say you want a line break after the elite word so you just write that BR which is a self-closing tag or element and then you see in the browser that after that word it creates a line break and the next part starts on a new line that's the use of the line break and let's say between these two paragraphs you want maybe a line there what you do is that uh, create a HR element you can see it creates a line between those two paragraphs the next thing we'll be covering is the subscript and the superscript now let's say you are writing a date let's say it's a p tag with maybe 23rd March 2020 you can see uh, we have the 23rd part but then the RD part you want it to be a uh, superscript so what you do is go back to your HTML then you write SUP for superscript Must obviously you must wrap the RD then save as you can see you have the 23rd March 2020 and when you want to write maybe like H2O for water you have H2O what you do sorry O what you do is that you wrap the the two with the sub element like that and then you'll have the h2o for water so those are the subscript and the superscript elements then you have another one which is called the span now most of the elements in html are block scoped let me just show you how I, what i mean uh, you can see for the p tags 
it spans the whole screen but for the sub tag it's just the size of that too also for the soup tag it's also the size of that rd you can see that so for the p tags they are called block scope but for these tags which just occupy the, the space they need they are called the inline scoped elements so another one which is much useful is the span so let's say span cut this and then you save okay you won't see any difference but when you inspect this paragraph this one you can see the span tag and I'll show you how that is useful in a second uh, let's look at something else which is the list let's say you want to display a list of things you have two types of list you have the ordered list and then you have the unordered list for each list you have the list item and then now that's where you put in what you want to list let's say you want a list for your groceries let's say you want a cabbage and maybe kills so you want potatoes when you save that you can see you have another list with one two three let's say you want an an ordered list let's copy this paste it put the ul drag and you save you can see now we have the unordered list which is like bulleted points another element that will and talk about is the table so for the table you just have the table element then you have the table row and then for the row maybe you can have the table heading let's say let's say order Then you can have another table heading with maybe the book. Then for the other row, you have maybe a table row. Then you have, let's say, two fairies. Oh, for the, yeah, two fairies. I must wrap this in the table data element then you have table data mm. Tim Ferris has published a book called uh, four hour work week When you save that and go back to your browser, you can see we have the author listing fairies, then the book is the four hour quick. And you can also add another row. So you just go back, create a table row, then maybe table data, another robot. Kiyosaki 
and another book which is maybe rich dad poor dad save go back to your browser then you can see now we have another author robert kiyosaki rich dad poor dad let's say robert kiyosaki has multiple books maybe rich dad poor dad and another one maybe the is it the four quadrant or something <laughs> i'm not sure so we just go back so what you just do it's create a row span attribute which I'll, I'll get into later let me say you want it to span two rows create another row now the table data you want the cash flow quadrant which is another book that robert kiyosaki has written and when you reload you can see tim ferris has one book then robert kiyosaki has two books which is the rich dad poor dad and the cash flow quadrant the next thing that you look at are the attributes so attributes are normally as i said earlier on the opening tag of an element for example this row span attribute is on the td or the table data opening tag let's say for example in the h1 you want a title attribute then hello world so when you hover you can see a tool tool tip in the word hello world as our title and that's the work of the title attribute then let's go ahead and link an image to a page so for an image we have the img tag for the img tag we have the source attribute which is the src now here in here you specify the url for your image and then you have the alternative text okay i'll, I'll show you uh, what's the use of the alternative text shortly for example you want to link an image to our page so let's just go to unsplash let's say this one copy image address then you paste it there then you save and then go back to your document and you can see that the image has been linked to our html oh that's nice the next thing is the alternative text let's say there is no image to display or your image fails to display for some reason let's just remove this and in the alternative text let's just put c so when the image fails to reload the alternative text is what is displayed as you can see here it's see so the next thing we'll be looking at is the anchor tag now for the anchor tag it's used to it's used like a link for example let's say to create a click me for the image you use the source attribute but for the anchor tag you use the href attribute so let's say you want to link to youtube www.youtube.com you save and go back to your page and click on click me you can see that the youtube page opens but let's say you don't want uh, the user to leave this page you want the youtube uh, page to open another tab so what you do is you add a target attribute then you say blank and 
and you click on the click me you see it opens another tab your document is still open on the other tab the other elements that we are going to look at are the script tags for example the script let's say you want to link your HTML I mean your JavaScript file let's say you want to link your JavaScript file you use the script tags this is where your JavaScript shows JavaScript goes here and then you have a style tag this is where your CSS goes for the, for the JavaScript I'll, I'll cover that in a later video let's say you have a span for this span here you want the text to be read so you just come here span color red then you save go back to your browser and you can see that the text is red that's how the span element is useful well not just that but there is much more that you can do with it and I think that's it so let's go and oh maybe I can show you one more thing I can show you how to link multiple pages let's say let's just create another one yeah another page HTML home.html save that let's say for the link okay. let's just put here each one home save that then go back here let's create another link here a with a href of home put home there so as you can see now we've created another link called home so when I click on that link it will take us to the home page and I can go back have an ID attribute and class attribute let's for for example for this span we want class be red and if you want to uh, style this to red maybe we can do a style If you want to display this text as red using this class, you must create a style element inside your head and then the dot is the selector for class which I'll show you in the CSS uh, video then you just say color and red and you see that as you can see now the text has transformed to red and that's a very use case, good use case for the class and the span and another thing you can go through is the form form has an action attribute which you link maybe you want to process this form using the PHP using a PHP script or a Python script when, when it has been submitted include your the the url for your script there then for the form you have the input element which is also self-closing you have different types you have the text uh, type text uh, type text for this now you create a field here yeah, by i can type in my text let's say we want to label this input field I can do it in two ways I can add a label tag 
we call this name I'm sorry for that name you save and you can see name and then the input you can see the auto field generator for crow it's working and also we have maybe another label for email maybe I can create another input for type email and let's name it email so you can see we have the name also you have the email and also it suggests for me some of the emails another one we have is the text area for messages maybe you want okay I want the name to be message let's delete the ID I'll go through the ID the CSS uh, and the CSS video so when we reload we have a text area which I can actually resize let's just put breakpoints here So this all this is on a line. So let's put a label for the text area. The label need be a message. And by the way, HTML elements are case insensitive, so it doesn't matter what case you use. So message you can see the message here also you can put placeholders if you want this name to appear here so let's put a placeholder for enter your name save that reload and you can see here enter your name placeholder and when I just start typing disappears another thing we can have with uh, type color I guess yeah. let's put a breakpoint here then uh, input type let's say color you can see now I can choose some colors whichever I want I can click OK another one is uh, the submit button so have input type submit and what this one does it submits your form let's say you have a value as submit so you can see when I click on this, the page will load and that shows that the form has been submitted. But you will see this in JavaScript where we can prevent uh, the page reloading. And I guess, oh, one more thing, I can show you another input uh, element or input type. You have input uh, type checkbox can have a checkbox let's just give it a name uh, let's put a line break there and let's say mail and let's say one control and female So we have male and female. And then you can have also radio buttons. Type is radio. Uh, 
let's say uh, paid or something then you can have unpaid put step radio so you have these two the paid and the unpaid and I think that's it we haven't even scratched the surface of HTML, but uh, whatever you've learned in this course, or, in, or rather in this video, will help us in building our our project, which will be coming up shortly. So let's get started with building our project. So I've just gone ahead and created a project folder, and I've included these four images, which is the sun also the moon icon and also this image here and also this other one so you can find those in the description below and just go ahead and clone the, the repository in github and let's get started so the first thing is creating an index.html file And then maybe you can open that in our browser. And let me just close this. We can have our boilerplate. Let's just call this a nice page. Then we start with a div. Then a header. Then another div for this minimal. So div. Then we'll have another div for the line. Just put a HTML entity called uh, NBSP, which basically means an unbreaking space. And by the way, I didn't go through the HTML, HTML entities. Maybe I can just go through them. You have this NBSP we can doesn't display and then we have uh, others like the ampersand others like the ampersand which is the amp we have uh, like arrow the left arrow you can see it's the left arrow we have others like the right arrow so it's and right then a double r for the arrow we have a couple of them and maybe i link a resource page in the description then the next thing we'll have on our page is the give for the navigation and then you have the another list we'll use another list in this case and list item we can have the home then we can have the lorem, the ipsum. You can 
would say that if you want these to be links you can wrap them using the anchor tags but I just leave them like they are and we are done with the header and, and it's a good thing to be commenting your code so yeah that's the header then you have another semantic then you have another semantic element which is the main element it's just writing this in some letter so main this just shows the main content of a page we have our h1 here which will be the web trends say that you can see the h1 and then also we have we we'll have another div which will contain our content for this content we we'll have two parts we we'll have the aside and then we we'll have another div for the main content and maybe I can show you what I mean. I've taken the main, these are header here, yeah? and then you have this uh, main, uh, the main section, and then you have this aside, and then you have this as our other div. And then inside our other div, we'll have two sections this section and this other one. So For the aside, we'll have uh, a span. Which will just contain that line. So, NBSP, for then unbreaking space. And then we'll have a P tag with the word latest. And that's that's our latest paragraph here and then in a in a, our other div we'll be having two sections like i said so the first section and then the first section will have a h2 cool transitions then rp let's put their dummy text or in 50 you can save that and we have that and then we have the second section 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 has a h2 also which is black and white let's use a html entity amp then white say that you can see black and white and also we have p tag so lore 50 and i think uh, we have also another div let me just show you in full page for this image because I've divided this this page into three, this section, this other div, and you also have another div here for the image. So uh, let's just go and put that div, and also we have an image there. The first image will link to it's the black image so just press on period forward slash and the background image black let's just put here black image as the alternative text 
let's just copy this then let's put here the white image like that and now both of the images should be somewhere here okay you can't see the white image because of the back of the white background but uh, you see how this will come to effect when it start in the CSS and I think that's it for our page yeah that's it so in the next video we'll be looking at the CSS so that you can uh, make this page using those transitions and also implementing the light mode and the dark mode so thanks see you next time bye